All right, so I'm in a fresh, clean file because if I'm going to do compositing, typically I do it in DaVinci Resolve. But recently, a lot of people have been asking about how to do compositing inside of Blender only. So now I'm, I'm trying to get out of my comfort zone of DaVinci and do it in here. Reason why I chose DaVinci versus Blender because of the viewport. The, the viewport, it's you don't get real time here. It's kind of hard to do something and like the viewport has to update like this. Unlike DaVinci Resolve, it's made for compositing. I just bring all my elements in and I can just render, boom, watch it back real time. And it's just a lot quicker and easy. But I understand that some people want to stay inside of Blender. So let's jump in really quick. First thing first, we go to our settings here. Make sure our output settings are the frame rate and the actual dimensions. I was at 1920 by 1080 and I was at 30 FPS. First thing I'm going to do is tab in use nodes. Here is my composite and here's my render layer. We do not need a render layer because we're not rendering anything. Everything is already done. I've rendered out my passes. So what I'm going to do is import my passes. And what I want to import is an image. There we go. Image. And I'm going to grab this image. I'm going to load up all of the passes. All right, so I have all of my three passes in. This is my background layer. And what I'm going to do here is press, uh, I think was it Alt Home Space? Yeah, Alt Home Space to put it there. And let's drag this guy over here. And I'm going to hold Shift, right mouse, just to connect these two. There we go. Here is my background. Here is my shadow. Actually, no, I think this is, let me go. Here is my cube. Here is my shadow. We come back here to my background footage. First thing first, you can see it looks off. I'm using EXRs, which is linear color space. Linear color space, it just holds so much more data, right? So for me, I need to switch it back to something that our monitor will recognize. Our monitors are sRGB, right? So I needed to put it into an sRGB color space. If you don't know anything about color spaces, there is a great video by, I forgot his name, In Light VFX, where he breaks down color space in a very easy and easy way to adjust. Matter of fact, he even gives you a free poster about color space gamut and all that stuff, which I constantly use and refer to all the time. So basically, this is what he talks about. But take a look at his channel. I'm going to go ahead and press shift A and I'm going to go S and I'm going to go color and we'll see color space here. We want to change. All right. My my for some reason, the octane node wrangler is being weird so I can't search right so I'm going to come in here scroll down to color I don't know where these nodes are honestly I, I use search so much that I don't even know where nodes are because I just search for them here it is in convert color space we're going to drop that in the pipeline I want to go from linear to sRGB boom there it is now we can see everything right that's what we want now this is what our monitor recognizes okay so again, I can preview everything. There is my box and there is my shadow. So we, the first thing we need to do is we need to start to stack them and put them together. I'm going to need an alpha over node. This is like basically kind of mixing it, right? So it's a little bit backwards. The background goes on top. The cube, we don't want the cube first. We want the background and put the background on the bottom. Okay, there we go. There's our first two connections. Here's our shadow on top of the video. Same thing. Let's go ahead and du uh, duplicate this again. We want our top image is going to be opposite. So I want the cube on the bottom and then boom, there it is. Now we have the cube on top. So if again, and then here we got the shadow underneath that, make sure you put the shadow underneath it right now. If we zoom in, this is one thing that's another plus about the workflow of Octane. If I zoom in here and scroll this up, you can see this edge looks horrible. Look how it's jagged and just this is actually a good thing in VFX. I'm going to do color grading on this. And when you do color grading, you are stretching the original pixels. You're stretching them and you're moving them and you're adding color and you're doing things on there. And eventually what happens is they are moved from their original position. So what happens, you'll get this sometimes this black edge around the actual 3D element. And that's not what you don't want that. A proper VFX workflow is to do all your color grading with this minus the, I guess we would say the final alpha on top, basically the alpha being multiplied or divided. I'm not going to get into all that jibber jab at the moment. But just think about it like this. We're taking the cookie 
and we're just going to basically put all the toppings on it. And then after we're done, we're going to wrap the cookie nicely and present it. Right. So right now it's unwrapped. We're going to put all the junk on top and then we're going to wrap it. And that's called pre multiplying. And if I come up into here and you'll see here on this, we do have a convert pre multiply, meaning pre multiply multiplication. And if I click on that, that was on the shadow. We don't want that on the shadow. Let me click on this one here. Boom. Now look at our edge. Our edge looks nice, clean, and proper. Technically, we want to do all of our work color grading wise right here before the pre multiplication. And then we multiply it, close it up, package it, and now it's ready to be served. Okay. From here, this is pretty much the setup. The scene is ready to go. And this is one of the nice things about Octane it renders, it already knows, hey, you need to have it unmultiplied technically because of VFX pipeline professional ones that's how they do it that's the workflow and they already render it out knowing that okay so that's one of the another little plus benefits about octane like this so now what we would do typically i would come in here add in my color adjustments to try to get this to sit because we can see this clearly doesn't really match the way things are lit again when you're lighting it try to get it as close as possible because then you do less work now in post okay so I'm going to go ahead and add in a color correction. No, I don't want that one. I'm going to go ahead and add in RGB curve. And I like to use RGB curves. There's many other ways you can do this. You can use an RG balance, a color balance, whatever. But I like to use RGB curves, right? The reason why is when I want to match this into a scene, it's easier to match in black and white values than it is in color. So if you come up here to the top, I can click red. And now we can clearly see how much brighter this is as far as lighting tone. So like I would probably want to bring this down a little bit. So I come to my RGB curves. I click on the red curve and I'm going to grab the top, which is the highlights. And I'm just going to bring that down. A little bit now, see this little workflow where we have to wait for it to load. This is one of the reasons why I prefer to work inside of a native compositor like DaVinci Resolve or Nuke or something like that, because we don't have to wait for it to compile. So I'm just going to bring the levels down a little bit, something more. And then again, there's not really too many dark colors on here to match the blacks to. There is slightly, but I'm not, not enough to really mess with it, right? So then I'm going to repeat the same process. We go to the green channel. Eh, it looks a little bit bright in the green channel too. Click on our green channel here. And then also we are going to just bring those levels down again. Just trying to get it to sit, getting the, these values to sit. And mainly like I'm looking here, this is my brightest area. This is where the sun was. I feel this should be brighter than the box because the box is not sitting directly into the sun. And then we'll go to the blue channel and let's look. It's not too bad. Blue is actually looking OK. We'll just bring about just a little bit on the blue. That's pretty much it. So from here, now we'll jump back to our color view and there we got it. It's, it's sitting in a little bit better. And now what we can do is we can even go ahead and pre multiply this because we know it's still happening after our color. So we can just really see what it's going to look like. And now look at that. That is sitting there really nice. Let's go ahead and compare the difference. There's before and there's after. And I would even say it looks a little dull as far as color uh, saturation. So what we could do is add in a saturation node, hue saturation value. I'm going to drop that in there and the saturation, maybe just go times two way too much okay so let's go ahead and divide that by half and then we're just going to inch it in there i'm going to go maybe 1.3 there we go just something like that just a little bit bump that up and you know this is pretty much the whole process of vfx and getting your thing to sit inside of here that looks really cool right if anything what i would do is add a little bit of blur to this because it's sitting here it's cg it's clean it's perfect and just i want to grunge it up to match my video so what i would probably also do is come in here and add in a blur node filters blur and then kind of drop this blur node in here and we'll set this to relative and then again we're just gonna add in a little bit of blur here just to knock the edge off okay this is like very detailed we're gonna go 0.01 maybe even like a 0.05 and what we should do is really zoom in on this guy here to see okay that's not too bad and if anything like I'm comparing it to the ground. I think it's a little bit too blurry. If anything, we really should be sharpening it to try to match the sharpness of our background plate. Let's go point two. All right. Kind of like something like that. So that's just a quick little run ballpark run on how to do compositing inside of blender.
So eventually what I'm going to be doing is a full step-by-step -step tutorial on Blender Octane and doing VFX shots. Maybe something similar to this, just doing the cube, something very simple. We won't do a camera motion, just do a static shot first. Learn how to put 3D elements into just like a static shot with no movement. That's the basics first. And then once you're there, you got a good handle on that. Then you move to tracking shots, which adds a whole nother world of difficulty when we're starting to do tracking shots. But this is the reason why I started learning Blender Octane was because I knew Octane's past with VFX and how easy it is to use as far as VFX. And that's the only reason why I decided to switch. But before I got into starting really getting back into my VFX, I wanted to learn the basics of Blender. Blender's lighting, I mean, uh, Octane's lighting, Octane's uh, how to set up HDRIs, how to set up materials, because I'm ultimately going to need that to do my VFX shots. So now I'm slif slowly shifting back into my VFX stuff. And really now I got to start learning about render settings on how to maximize, you know, render time See, for something like this, which I actually got my render times down to about 30 to 40 seconds per frame at about, I think, 100 samples, which wasn't too bad. It still took a couple of hours to render on my old 1050 Ti uh, laptop here, which, you know, if you got a big pump and GPU, you can knock out frames really quickly. But again, on my minimal equipment, helping me maximize my settings. Well, ultimately, when I do get better equipment, I will know how to optimize my settings for, again, using an old crappy laptop. I'll know how to really optimize my material when I do get higher end equipment. So if you guys want to go deeper into VFX shots like this, again, I have down two courses down in my gun road. Take a look at them. I walk through step by steps or like at least an hour long. And then ultimately take a look at the free course down there about blenders, octanes, uh, node shaders. So we can get into the basics of how to shade stuff and things like that. I'm going to be working on a lighting video coming up here shortly. I'm just going to be pumping out a lot of free content for you guys on blender octane. It's going to help because there's nothing out there for blender octane. Everything's octane C4D. So catch you guys in the next one. Patrick LeVard. Keep rendering. It's the only way you'll get better. Peace.